Hi, it's Margaret Dwyer here at Marsh Billings Rockefeller National Historical Park in Woodstock, Vermont. I'm in the formal gardens today, which is beautiful. This garden um, has been here since really the Billings family lived here. The Billings women established these flowers and grounds and liked to hire female landscape architects to work on it over the years. There's an incredible fountain that's the crowning jewel in the center of it and that has been here since 1895. Um, the style of this garden is a neoclassical style and it's very, very formal and lush. And we've plucked a lovely bouquet that I'm going to do a demonstration um, of for you with watercolor. And I hope you'll join me to either watch or join along if you have supplies. And I hope you enjoy this garden as much as I do. Hi, here's our lovely bouquet that we've gotten from the uh, formal gardens. And we're back on the front porch of the mansion in front of the Dutchman's pipe, which is my favorite little corner of the world when I'm up here. So um, we're gonna do a painting, really a loose little painting of this bouquet. And I'm not gonna bother to draw or anything. We're gonna keep it really light and fresh. And a few of these flowers um, that I'm working on I'm going to wet the paper in a couple of areas and begin wet on wet, but I'm only going to wet a few sections. A lot of times I'll wet the whole paper, but um, I'm going to be a little selective here. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm not going to flood the paper, just slightly wet here. And I've got some fuzzy flowers that I'm gonna do wet on wet. They're gonna look like a blob at first, but um, I will bring it all together through the stages. I'm going for like a pink magenta color. I've mixed up some quinacridone magenta and a little bit of rose. And I'm gonna just barely touch the paper and I'm gonna get these little beautiful soft edge blooms. So the paper's damp and the paint is um, not so watered down that it doesn't hold its shape. It's not going very far. Pulling out a few little points. This is gonna have to be done in stages. This first stage will have to dry before I go on to the next. So over here my paper's dry. You can see the difference of the hard edge that I'm getting versus the soft edge, but it looks kind of neat together. And I'm going to jump over to here. Same kind of flower. This one's drooping a little bit. It's very dramatic looking. You notice my brushwork, I'm not outlining and filling it in, I'm letting the brush bounce. And I think while that is thinking about drying, I'm going to put in a couple of yellow uh, globes up in here and my paper is uh, wet over here but dry on the other side Now before my paper is dry, I'm going to sprinkle some salt on these purple flowers. It's going to give it a lot of texture. Actually before I do that, I'm going to charge it with another color. Charging is when you drop in color into another color or a deeper value into a lighter value. And I'm mixing up a deeper sort of purpley red. 
And I just want to put a few additions in here. Now, the paper's not as wet as it was. So these are really holding their shape. I'm holding my brush back nice and far. You don't want to hold your brush like this. That's how you would hold a pencil. It's really warm out today, so this is drying really quickly. And you plein air painters know how that goes. But I get a, a, some definition already. Oh, that's pretty dry. So we're gonna get on with this painting. I'm gonna knock the salt off when it's dry. Don't paint in those areas unless the salt is off your paper. Um, now I'm just gonna do a technique that's called wet on dry. And I'm gonna do very loose painting here with my brushwork. There's this really cool flower in here that reminds me of coral. So I'm gonna to try to capture that right off the bat. And it's, it's really fun to paint without drawing because I feel like there's less pressure to get it exactly the way it, you know, it looks in real life. So while that is wet, I'm gonna drop in a deeper uh, yellow. <clears throat> and this is a little bit of charging. This just makes it a more interesting and less flat. Now I will get back to that flower later. Um, I'm gonna go back to this little round guy, which I didn't get the salt texture in this one, but I did in these, sort of. And I'll glaze those with yellow when those are dry. Okay, now I'm gonna go to a really pale yellow and pull out some petals. I'm saving room in the middle for the center. This has multiple layers on it. So I'll probably have to wait till this dries a little bit to get it all, but it's very challenging in a good way. Now I'm gonna do that charging technique again, just on the tips.
trying to leave some white spaces in here too. Pretty fun. It reminds me of like fireworks or something. I'm gonna get right in the center of that flower with a sort of a deep marigold color. Oh yeah. There's this beautiful flower, this purple flower, that all it is is a bunch of beautiful overlapping lines. It's so pale that I barely have paint on my brush. There, I've darkened it so you can see it a little better. And you notice I'm still using a big brush. And that's because I get a beautiful tip that can carry a lot of paint. The smaller the brush I use, I actually get less control and I can't carry as much paint, so. so pretty. I don't know where to go. I guess I did. This flower down here is a combination of yellow and pink, but they're super pale. So I'm going to start really light and then I'm going to charge it with just the palest peach color. It's always good to have a couple of those petals touching each other so they don't look uh, too contrived. get that center in a minute. I am still waiting a little bit longer for these to dry and in the meantime I'm going to try to pull some of this together by painting some stems and the stems I'm going to start with a real yellow green I'm going to use a color called quinacridone green, um, gold and I'm putting a little bit of hooker's green into it and then I'm going to go darker as that dries so I'm just going to pull a few of these along 
try to make sure that there's two or three greens in every stem. See, I'm using a small brush and I ran out of paint right here. I had to re-dip. It's nice to see some linear addition here. Drop some green into that. Now that this is dry, I can overlap some of these strokes and get this really pretty uh, transparent buildup. Gives it a lot of depth and mystery too, I think. Let's see where else I can do that. I've got to go back into this guy now, so. Um, I'll go in with a little pure yellow. Just kind of filling in those spaces. I'm going to drop a little bit of a yellow, very yellowy green in there. It's like a neutralized color. That's nice. Okay. Do a little to this guy too. So these started out just as wet on wet, sort of blobby looking things. But now that it's dry, you can bring out the contrast. Details. I think for this flower right here, this is what it looks like. It's a really intense color. So it's going to take more than one layer of paint to get that depth. So I'm going to go in here with sort of a reddish purple and try to pull out some of this detail. I'm not going to cover up this nice soft underpainting. I'm going to let that suggest a lot of detail and I'm just going to deliver you a little bit and there's going to be a lot of implied detail. See how that pulls together? This nice blurry background serves as a sort of an out of focus back section of the flower.
What a cool color that is, uh, like a reddish purple. Oh. You can see where the salt worked, and I'm letting that imply some detail as well. With just a little water on my brush, I'm going to go in and add a few drops of water to some of this dark paint that I just added. Um, it's going to sort of push the paint to the edges and hopefully get this nice little like ringed, it's like a stain or a ring around the edge of the shape. deeper color here. Then I will do it to the other side, but I'm going to move on to another flower right now because now you know how to do that. This is the flower I'm interested in doing. I'm gonna do what's called negative painting. And negative painting is when you paint around something to make it stand out as opposed to painting the shape itself. So I'm gonna mix up like a, a burnt reddish purple. What a crazy sounding color that is, but somehow that works in my head. So if I make a few of these distant, the bottom layer of petals wet on dry, see how I can paint the shape of a leaf or the petal in front of them, whoops, as much as I am the petal itself that I'm painting. So I'm painting this back one, but in doing so, I'm bringing out that petal that's in front of it. Some of these petals have like a little cup feeling to them. Adding this um, darker value of the green helps to pull out the form so it's not so flat. If you consider that every shape has at least a dark middle and light value to it. more negative painting so I'm painting this flower but at the same time I'm describing the edge of this flower <laughs> okay so I've worked on this a little bit more when it was dry I worked on this flower a little bit, um, put in a few darks and a few more dark greens, and I'm gonna try to finish it up a bit here. Um, I forgot what color I had on my brush here. Okay, purple. So this flower has these lovely, delicate spikes, and I'm gonna overlap a few the same way I did with this petals on this flower down here. And again, the idea is not to cover up what you just painted. Just these few strokes. See the transparency? 
that I'm getting. That's nice. From the center, it's this nice little spiky, straight up. There's a little bit of green down in here. So I'm just going to kiss it a little bit with that. I think people I get asked a lot about backgrounds, when to put in a background and when not to. I think if you're just practicing your brushwork, you know, don't feel like you have to overwork things. Um, if you were to put in a background, I think I would take a color that wasn't in there and just do something like uh, negative paint leave lots of glints of white so you don't feel like you have to come right up to the edges and again I've got a pretty good sized brush and this is just wet on dry will be uh, You'll see why I leave a lot of whites <clears throat> when this is finished. So I'm just going to work like this for a while using a really loosened up a cobalt blue paint right now. I'm doing this circular stroke and I'm barely touching the paper. The paint is really literally just falling off the brush. You notice I'm not like stroking it like that. I'm really letting it just fall. And I'm pushing into some of these spiky little bits and pieces of the flowers. And in doing that I'm also creating new shapes because I'm I'm negative painting. So while I'm putting this background in I'm also describing the edges of these reddish purple flowers. Now I didn't wet my paper first so the trick about <clears throat> doing this kind of background is because your paint's gonna keep drying just keep things moving real fast and if for some reason you you have to stop you want to do what's called a lost and found edge so that you can pick it up where you left off later and I'll show you how to do that so here I've created a an edge with this blue and if I stopped and went back to it I'd have a real problem with this edge so if I want to need to stop I'm going to rinse my brush out with real clean water really clean water and I'm going to start way back here nice and clean and I'm going to push into this so that it just fuzzes and blurs out. And then when I come back to finish it up, I can just re-wet it and go along my merry way. And I won't have an edge to deal with. Um, so let me just put a little bit more of this nice blue um, over here. Because this edge right here may have dried. Uh, no, I'm good. That's why we use lots of water. Now, I like to have um, some nice watermarks and things happen in my background sometimes. So if that happens, don't, don't worry about it. That's actually a pretty nice effect. See how I'm not fussing with this? What I didn't do though was squeeze out enough paint. So, 
I'm going to just stop and do that because I don't want to lose the vibrancy of the color. You really don't want to cut corners when you're doing a wash that's meant to be just so nice and juicy that you don't see brush strokes. Now you notice this is a little darker. If I do that kind of closer to the flowers and let it just bleed out, it gives it a nice vignette effect. Or you can just do it evenly. Up to you. When it's really wet too, you can you can lift your paper up and let it run. Can't do that with oil paint. Ha! I'm going to add a little bit more up here. I like the darker blue. So amazingly, this is still wet over here. Notice how this big brush can get into those neat little corners quite easily. It's like watching the Zamboni. Just, <laughs> just watching it fill itself in. Makes a difference though having a background, doesn't it? Now the reason I didn't stop and do all these middle sections is because <clears throat> these are all called trapped shapes and I don't have to worry about edges drying and things like that. But I do with this huge space in the background. It's not many breaks, so I'm getting that out of the way first. Now this should be interesting because that's probably dry <laughs> or damp. If it was bone dry, it wouldn't be a problem. <clears throat> I'm just going to plow in here. Oh, it's not bad. It's very friendly. See, watercolor gets such a bad rap. It's not hard to use at all. Um, a nice background treatment, too, would be to sprinkle salt on the whole background, and you get this sparkly, surprising, cool thing. And then, you know, I'm going to take my time, go a little bit slower. Still using a decent sized brush to get into the trap shapes, leaving glints of white. And when this dries, <clears throat> if you need to, even it up by giving um, a second coat to a few areas than you can, but you know, let it dry. Let it get really dry before you do that. You don't want to disrupt a wash that's not completely dry. If it's dry, it won't lift. But if it's a little bit of damp, you're going to get some some watermarks. So just expect that. And I think I'm pretty close to being done. I would probably take this home and live with it and look at it, maybe have a glass of wine and ponder it, and uh, go back in in a couple of areas that, you know, might just need a, a touch or two here and there to bring it out. But essentially, when you're doing a bouquet, don't feel like you have to get every single piece of it. Just get the parts that interest you. Don't worry about the vase if you're just doing a simple brushwork piece and not worrying about drawing. And uh, just have a nice, loose, fun time. So 
I think until we meet again, I'm going to call this a day. Thanks for tuning in.